Good morning, Miss Rachel, and good morning to everyone who are with us in this beautiful morning here in Baguio Convention and Cultural Center. And to everyone watching us live in their respective homes via the FB page of Baguio Tourism and of PIO, we will begin the program with this processional, starting, of course, with the awardees of this year's search for the outstanding citizens of Baguio, which will be immediately followed by, of course, the city officials, headed by City Mayor Benjamin Magallo and our guest of honor and speaker, ushering the group at the University of Baguio, Pigang Ubun Taapuan, or Ubun Cultural Group.
Military Academy, followed by the singing of the national anthem, Cordillera Hymn and Baguio Hymn by the University of Baguio Voices and Chamber Orchestra.
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus is credited with the idea that the only constant in life is change. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have just witnessed is the beautiful metamorphosis of our beloved body in the last 114 years, presented to us by the world-renowned University of Bagu Performing Arts Group. And uh, at this point, we'd like to give them a chance, of course, to present their talent right here at the 114th celebration of Bagu Day.
you very much. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, what we have, we have just witnessed is a beautiful metamorphosis of our beloved Baguio in the past 114 years. Presented to us by the world-renowned University of Baguio Performing Arts Group. Let's give them another round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor Honorable Faustino Olowan. And our city councillors, we'd like to acknowledge Honorable Benny Bumogao, Honorable Jose M. Molintas, Honorable Arthur Alatio, Honorable Betty Lourdes Tabanda, Honorable Leandro Yamo Jr. Honorable Isabella Casalan Jr. Honorable Maria Mailen Victoria Yaranon. Honorable Elmer Tatui. Honorable Peter Fianza. Honorable Vladimir Cayabas. Honorable Fred Pagpagin. And Honorable Lydia Farines. Acknowledge the Philippine Military Academy headed by Colonel Rodel Pangilinan. Thank you very much for joining us for this morning. Also, the Boy Scouts of the Philippines. We here with us this morning also we have our Miss Bakio 2023, Miss Jana Ryal Lumidao. Our Miss Baguio Turismo 2023, Miss Justin Tara Marie Valencia. Miss Baguio Calicasa 2023, Miss Sofia Francesca Cacho. Also, we have Miss Baguio Cultura 2023, Miss Yula Ariel Palte. And Miss Baguio Malika in 2023, Miss Noreen Azarcoy. Our city 
Planning, Development and Sustainability Officer, Architect Donna Cabang. The Secretary to the Sangonia Palungsod, Attorney Brenner Benmoyan. Our City Social and Welfare Development Officer, Ms. Liza Buleo. Our City Veterinarian, Dr. Silardo Bestel. Our City Civil Registrar, Ms. Marietta Coben, the representative of Ms. Luz Lerick. And of course, our City Director for the Baguio City Police Office, Police Colonel Francisco Buloyan, Jr. We also have Sir Julio S. Lizardo, the Chief Regional Staff of Procon. Also, we have here with us, of course, we would not forget our IPMR representative in the City Council, Councillor Max Maximo H. Edwin, Jr., sir. And also, our ABC President, Honorable Michael Lawana. We also have with us the Regional Director of DTI Guard, Director Juliet Lucas. The Department of Tourism Guard, Director Jovita Ganonga, represented by Ma'am Anji, member of the team of the DOT Guard. We also have the Regional Director of Napalcom, Director Edita Pundo. We also have a representative from RAB Car, Attorney Gaia Habang. May we also respectfully acknowledge our former city mayors who are with us this morning, the representatives of the family of Honorable Luis Lardizaba, Colonel Francis Lardizaba. We also have with us the representative of Honorable Ernesto Bueno, Mr. Cookie Bueno. Representative of Honorable Francisco Paraan, Dr. Ronaldo Paraan. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the Regional Director of the Philippine Information Agency Car, Director Helen Pibaldo, ma'am. And we also acknowledge the presence of former Mayor Mauricio G. Dumongo. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of our sister city, all the way from Nueva Ecija, or Nueva Ecija. We have the Nueva Ecija City Council of uh, San Jose City. Good morning and welcome to Baguio. Thank you very much for joining us for this morning. We also have the representative of Sablantenge, Honorable Alfredo Dacomos. We also acknowledge the presence of the family of the late Arnolfo Arnold Badasen Kadangin, who wrote our very own Baguio Hymn. Earlier this morning, we were also welcomed by the University of Baguio Performing Arts, headed by, of course, Sir Glenn Garland and Sir Froilan Aspa, and the UP Chamber Orchestra, spearheaded by Sir Nelson Colbury. We'd also like to greet a beautiful morning, of course, the President of the University of Baguio, Engineer Javi Bautista. Looking back, Baguio used to be a vast mountain zone with lush highland forests, teeming with various wildlife and numerous species of flora. The area was a hunting ground of the indigenous people. When the Spanish arrived in the Philippines, the area was never fully subjugated by Spain due to the intensive defense tactics of the indigenous Igorots of the Cordilleras. Now, Baguio has also grown into a city of faith, a haven of arts and culture, the home of quality learning, the North's major economic center and the gateway to the Cordillera Highlands. It is home to the friendliest taxi drivers, hard-working policemen, 
creative and talented local people, and to common Ibakiu, who loves to wear boots and hat during Burmans. The role of our leaders in our city's journey towards a better and more resilient future is undeniably essential. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, for his Bagyo Day message, let us hear it from our Honorable Congressman of the Lone District of Bagyo City, Congressman Marcus O. Go. Welcome to Baguio, and thank you for joining us this morning. To our Honorable Mayor Benji Magalong and his lovely wife, Arlene, Vice Mayor Faustino Loan, and our City Councilors, officials from Benguet, uh, led by our very own Governor of Benguet, uh, Governor Lencho Class. Good morning heads of the various national line agencies, distinguished guests, our Punong barangays and other barangay officials, outstanding awardees this uh, morning, aking mga kababayan, friends, ladies and gentlemen, isa pong mapagpalaya at magandang umaga sa inyo lahat. It is my distinct great privilege and pleasure to welcome you all in the celebration of the significant milestone in the history of our community, the Baguio City Charter Day. It is a day to reflect upon our remarkable journey, honor our heritage, and look ahead to the promising future that lies ahead before us. Charter Day is more than just a celebration. It is a declaration of our cities in identity, rights, and responsibilities. A commemoration of the day we were officially recognized as a district, as a distinct and thriving entity, empowered to govern ourselves, make decisions, and shape our own destiny. We pay homage to the visionary leaders and passionate citizens who came together to pave the way for progress, advancement, and unity. On September 1, 1909, Baguio was officially declared a chartered city under Act Number 1963. As we mark 114 years since the granting of our charter, we not only honor the past, but we also celebrate the remarkable accomplishments that define our present. Our city has grown, evolved, and flourished into a hub of innovation, culture, and opportunity. Fueled by these collective efforts of each and every one of us, our city stands as a testament to the power of collaboration, resilience, and the unrelenting spirit of our residents. We have faced challenges head on, celebrated triumphs together, and continuously strive to create a place that embraces all we call it home. From the bustling streets of downtown to the serene neighborhoods, every corner of our city carries a glow story. Stories of families, of entrepreneurs, of artists, and of community builders. Our diversity is our strength, and our unity is our driving force. I can still recall the decision I made to attend summer classes at the University of the Philippines, Baguio. Do business, work, and live here in our city. People do not know, but it was my very own love and present and my pursuit for my, for my soul, my dad's my wife, okay, that made me stay here in the city of Baguio. And I experienced then and even now, 
the beauty, the serenity, and grandeur of Baguio, as well as the kindness of the people and the humanness of its leadership. The diversity I saw brought me closer to our city, making it our home, just like many of us. Thank you, Baguio, for this great and fulfilling opportunity and for serving you with integrity, competence, and compassion. May this celebration also serve as a reminder that the story of our city is ongoing. It is written by each of us, and we contribute to its growth, prosperity, and resilience. Our journey is characterized by the challenges we overcome the partnership we forge and the achievements we celebrate together. Let us stand united in our efforts to foster an environment where opportunity knows no bounds, where compassion is a guiding force, and where progress benefits every member of our community. To our youth, you are the custodians of our city's legacy. Your ideas, dreams, and passion we will shape the trajectory of our future. Embrace the heritage that surrounds you, but also dare to push the boundaries of what our city can become. To my fellow public servants and our city officials and employees, your dedication ensures that our city functions smoothly and that the needs of our community are met. Your hard work often goes unnoticed but it is deeply appreciated by every citizen of this community. To our residents and elders, you are the heart and soul of this city. Your engagement, your volunteerism, and your commitment to making a difference makes our city more than just a place on a map. You make it a true home. So, as we celebrate the City Charter Day, let us do so with a sense of pride and gratitude for our past, a determination to shape our present, an unwavering commitment to the betterment of our future. Let us honor the legacy of those who came before us by building a city not only that stands the test of time, but also shines as a model of progress and harmony perfectly echoing the theme of today's event, reflections of the past, visions for a resilient future. Thank you all for being here today and be part of this momentous celebration. Together, let us embrace the spirit of unity and dedication that define us and continue to create a city we can all be proud of. Again, long live our city and may our future be as remarkable as our history. Happy Baguio Charter Day. Thank you. Thank you very much for that wonderful message, Honorable Congressman Mark Bro. May we take this opportunity to also acknowledge the family of our former mayor, Honorable Jaime R. Bugnosen, represented by Mr. Asayan Bugnosen, Mr. Michael Bugnosen, and Ms. Andrea Joy Bugnosen. We likewise acknowledge the family of our former mayor, Honorable Braulio D. Yeranon, who is with us this beautiful morning po. Joining us also this morning is from the National Commission of Senior Citizens, Office of the President Commissioner, Sir Raymar Magsilungan. Good morning, sir. And Mr. Rainier Cruz III. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We also have the ARD of Teslacar, Mr. Jamisho Dawate. And of the Regional Director of Dole Car, we have Sir Nathaniel Lacardo. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the delegates of uh, the Indigenous People Mandatory Representative League of the Philippines, headed by Chair Honorable Elpidio Quines. Good morning, sir. Also, would like to acknowledge the City Hall employees. Palakpakan po yung mga sarili nyo. Thank you. 
Our delegates from the Philippine National Police, thank you very much. And our guests from the Navy Reservists. The Bureau of Fire Protection, headed by Superintendent Marisol Oliver, good morning. And also the Society of Outstanding Citizens of Baguio member and official and their family, good morning. and Dr. Samuel Aquino. And of course, my fellow scouts, the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. Magandang magandang umaga po. Thank you very much for joining us in this beautiful morning. Having a modern governance outlook allows organizations and local government units to adapt quickly to challenging times so that they can endure and thrive. To also share his value day message, let us all welcome our city vice mayor, Honorable Faustino Olohan. who are gathered here today, all the VIPs earlier acknowledged by the Master of Ceremonies, and perhaps uh, I would include some other groups like the civil society, the members of the non-government organization, and of course, the employees of the local and national government. And for most, our guest of honor and speaker, Her Excellency Mary Kay L. Carlson. And to all of you who are gathered here this morning, a rainy but warm morning to all of you. Today, we celebrate our 140th founding anniversary. A lot has already changed from the pre-colonial period wherein our city was just a vast mountain zone with lush highland forests, teeming with various wildlife such as indigenous animals and numerous flora to what it has become now. We reminisce when Baguio just used to be a hunting ground of the indigenous peoples, notably the Ibalois and other Igorot ethnic groups, until such time when the Spanish and Americans arrived and introduced various changes in our political landscape and geographical structure. Today, we can notably notice how our city has transformed. We have developed into a melting pot of different peoples and cultures in the Cordillera administrative region. Numerous investment and business opportunities are lured into our city. Likewise, our city of Pines has continu continuously thrived to be the home of a diverse culture. Aside from becoming the center of business, commerce, and education in northern Luzon, as well as the regional center of the Cordilleras. It has also developed as a center for arts and culture, being held as a creative city by no less than the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, for its craft and folk art. The first city in the country to join 63 other cities 
from 44 countries to have been added to the 180 strong Creative Cities Network. But prior to this accomplishment and accolades, we know that our city also went through some through times during World War II when much our city was destroyed and almost reduced to robots. We were able to endure those difficulties and revitalize our economy. Post World War II, so us get to the feet to be devastated again by the July 16, 1990 earthquake. And just lately, we experienced the worst during the pandemic. But why am I seeing and recounting all of this? It is for the reason that is during these trying times that our competency and aptitudes as citizens of Baguio and as Cordillerans is distinct. We have proven that amid these various challenges, we will always rise and come to life. These are the traits distinctive to us people of Baguio and in which we must be very proud of. As we celebrate our anniversary and with this year's theme, Reflection of the Past, Vision for Resilient Future, it has continued to be positive. We may be facing new and even greater challenges, but as long as we continue to support each other, we will be able to surpass and resolve whatever problems confront our beloved city. I, as your public servant, solicit your cooperation and support for all the programs, projects, and plans of our city government. Together, we can triumph over all adversities. With that, I wish to extend my heartfelt congratulations. Happy Baguio Day to all of us, and may the Lord Almighty continue to shower us with his blessing. Good morning once again. Thank you, Justin Gina Katatriya. Thank you so much for that remarkable message, Honorable Vice Mayor Fosino Olowan. Thank you very much. At this point, we'd like to acknowledge also the presence of the better half of our Honorable Congressman, Mrs. Soledad Soldro. Good morning, ma'am. From its humble beginnings up to its towering achievements, Baguio has an undeniable glow and undisputed reputation that no other cities can equal. Its rich culture and creativity manifest by its designation as one of the UNESCO creative cities have captivated the hearts of many, making it nature's gift to the indigenous people of the north. These numerous feats of Baguio are products of the hard work, dedication, and passion of its current and former leaders. At this juncture, on Baguio's 114th birthday, we will be presenting a service recognition award to the first batch of former mayors of our city who served our city from 1960 to 2019. We will also be giving the same recognition to the next batch of former mayors next year as we celebrate our 115th charter anniversary. May I respectfully invite our city mayor, Honorable Benji Magalo, to present our award to the first batch of our former mayors. And we will likewise invite the awardee or the representative or members of the family of our awardees who are with us today on the stage. May I read the citation of the award? Republic of the Philippines, City Government of Baguio, Service Recognition Award is presented to the distinguished personality here with us today. In grateful recognition 
of his committed service as local chief executive that greatly contributed to strengthening the pillars of growth and development for the city of Baguio and its people, given this first day of September 2023 during the 114th Baguio Day celebration at the Baguio Convention and Cultural Center, Baguio City, signed Benjamin B. Magalong, City Mayor. We also invite all, all of our city officials, Congressman Marco, Vice Mayor Faustino Oloen, and all of our city councilors to join our city mayor in front of you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the first service recognition award is presented to Honorable Luis L. Lardizabal, our local chief executive from 1960 to 1963 and 1968 to 1979. The award will be received by his grandson, Colonel Francis Lardizabal. Thank you very much. The same service recognition award is presented to Honorable Ernesto H. Bueno, local chief executive from 1979 to 1986. The award will be received by his youngest son, Mr. Kuki Bueno. Yes. 
The next Circus Recognition Award is presented to Honorable Mauricio G. Domoga, a local chief executive from 1992 to 2001 and 2010 to 2019. We are more than honored to have Honorable Mauricio G. Domoga with us this morning. Thank you very much. The next service recognition award is presented to Honorable Braulio D. Yeranon, Barrio Zoto Chief Executive from 2004 to 2007 and 2010 to 2019. The award will be received by his daughter, Honorable Counselor Maria Mailen Victoria Yeranon. And Brian, of course. Thank you very much. May we request our awardees and representatives to stay on stage for a photo opportunity. As you may call on our uh, awardees and the representatives for a photo op right here. Please. We invite everyone, all of our awardees and their representatives to join us for one photo opportunity. recognition to the next batch of former mayors next year as we celebrate our 115th charter anniversary. So this is just the first batch of our recognition for giving service to the city of Baguio from 1960 to 2019. One more round of applause for our local chief executives. Thank you very much for your service, dedication. Thank you and congratulations once again to this year's Outstanding Citizens of Baguio. Apart from being the first UNESCO Creative City,
give due recognition to the people of Baguio who gave significant and remarkable contributions for the growth and welfare of our city. The ORBs come from different sectors regardless of their social and economic status. For this year's awarding of the outstanding citizens of Baguio, may we call on Mr. Art Tibaldo, the chairperson of the Society of Outstanding Citizens of Baguio. Warm and pleasant morning to one and all. Very pleased first to see the officials. Give our thanks, please. We may address our city officials, our uh, congressmen, our mayor, our vice mayor, and the councilors. And of course, Her Excellency, the U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, to join us, please, for the award of the most outstanding citizens of Bob. The city government of Baguio, in collaboration with the Society of Outstanding Citizens of Baguio, whose members are here present today, plus above, is Christ, is there Christ over there? Please give them a round of applause, please. Today, we confirm the 2023 Outstanding Citizens Award to three individuals who, su who successfully passed through the screening process and got the nod of the judges. It is therefore my, our distinct honor and pride to present to you the three awardees for community service. May we call on Mr. Ramon Cito Cabrera. <laughs> For professional service, the second award goes to Professor Wilfredo B. Mina. readers and enhances what was learned from the academy. 
He embodies the teacher, was a teacher, always a teacher. Congratulations, Professor. Thank you, sir. Okay, the third awardee is Jail Superintendent Mary Ann Olagin Mesbano for professional service. We will request our uh, awardees to please join our officials for a photo opportunity. Thank you very much and congratulations once again. Number three, most of the citizens of Baguio. Congratulations and good job. Thank you very much to our city officials and Her Excellency for joining. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to acknowledge also the presence of uh, the senior defense official and the defense attaché of the U.S. Embassy We'd like to welcome Colonel Edward Harrams and his lovely wife, Carrie Myers. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the officer in charge of the Naval Forces Reserve Northern Luzon alongside with the officers of the 122nd Naval Combat Support Squadron Reserve. We have here with us Commander Anthony De Leon, Philippine Navy. GSC Reserve. Thank you, sir. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of our good friends from the Hotel and Restaurant Association of Baguio H. Rap. Thank you very much for being here as well. Once again, thank you and congratulations to this year's outstanding citizens of Baguio. And apart from being the first UNESCO creative city in the Philippines, well, Baguio has achieved numerous prestigious international and national awards, which speaks of its administration's commitment to excellence and in positioning Baguio as a smart city. All of which will not be possible without the man leading the entire city to a more resilient future. To deliver his Baguio Day message and the state of the city address, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome our city mayor, Honorable Benjamin B. 
Today we gather to mark a historic occasion, the 140th chapter anniversary of our beloved city, encapsulating our triumphs, challenges, and enduring spirit that defines our great city. It is with great pride that I deliver the stage of the city address. This will take about 15 minutes, so please sit tight. Pagpasok natin sa taong ito ng pagkilos, tanggapin natin at patuloy tayong matuto mula sa mga mahalagang pangyayari na patuloy na bumubuo at iniibang ang ating ganda tungo sa inaasang ng Panginoon. Just three months into 2023, we face an unexpected challenge. The Baguio Public Market, 1,565 stalls were completely destroyed, resulting in 24 million tons of damage. Sabi nila, Abutin daw na tatlong buwan, three months, para maayos itong nasunod na lugar. I told them, we don't have three months, we only have seven days. In just seven days, we were able to recover. Ibigyan natin ng mga naapekto na vendors ng pwesto at kaagad-agad silang nakabalik sa pagtitingin. This remarkable achievement was made possible by the collective efforts of friends, volunteers, public servants, and donors. Amidst this collaborative endeavor, it became more evident that we had to confront issues of corruption and unabated subleasing within the public market. Our thorough review of market operations persisted, resulting in the conviction of six market collectors who were proven to have falsified documents. Seven more are forthcoming. Investigations are ongoing for other anomalous acts, and we will face additional complaints from them. Two months ago, Typhoon Ega released widespread power outages, disrupted communications, and left 610 families, 2,563 individuals displaced with an estimated cost of 18 million pesos in damages. The admirable response of the local authorities, courageous resistance, and dedicated volunteers was the epitome of collective action. The national government gave a total of 28,000 or 28 million pesos financial aid to those severely affected by the typhoon, and various companies and individuals gave food and non-food donations that amounted to 6 million 330 pesos. Sa paglipat ng attention mula sa mga hamang ng ating naranasan, patungo sa mga pagkakataon na nakaabang, pagnilayan natin ang lakas at pagkakaisa na nabuo mula sa mga pagsubok. Mahalaga na kikilalanin natin ang fundasyon kung saan itinatayo ang ating mga pagsisisa ating seven-point agenda na tapat na gumagabay sa administrasyon ito. Na naging kumpas na pagtuturo sa ating tungo sa mga hangarin ng ating mga pamangyan at mga inaasahan sa pag-uunan ng bago. On environment, land use, and energy, one of our standout initiatives is the Green and Blue Box Project. This visionary undertaking is a testament of our commitment to fostering an eco-friendly and pedestrian-friendly urban environment. Aligned with its commitment, forthcoming updated city comprehensive development and land use plan shall serve as a strategic blueprint that will guide our efforts with urban development. This includes a comprehensive review of the high limits of building, ensuring that our decisions are science-based, data-driven, and not politically motivated. We are eagerly awaiting funding approval for the rehabilitation of the Baloy Park at the cost of 78 million. This initiative exemplifies our desire to honor and celebrate our cultural heritage. We will celebrate the completion of two notable projects on September 8th, the reflection pool at Upper Wright Park near Mansion House and the Post Office Park along Session Road. 
continuing our unwavering commitment to the principles of environmental sustainability or working closely with the United Nations Development Program of the Low Carbon Urban Transport System Project. This project is res a response to these needs with a focus on implementing eco-friendly energy efficient modes of transport and soon by October or November two electric vehicles will be coming up to the city of Bangor for use in our public sector. Together also with the UNDP, we have engaged the young people of the city and involved them in the project called Streets for Children. This innovative action is about having our children design the streets that they use. We are working closely with private organizations that adopt and contribute to the rehabilitation effort of our road island. On climate change and disaster resilience, February 2023, we held our first climate change summit. The summit served as a directive in motivating all to unite and work in harmony to implement climate change programs and projects among stakeholders. We have been working with the Asian Development Bank and Rumble, a global engineering architecture and consultancy based in Denmark, in developing our flood water early, early warning and mitigation and information system. We kicked off with this project early this year. With the growing risk of severe flooding and landslides, this system will guide the city appropriate, the city's appropriate and immediate response to the shocks and stresses brought about by multiple hazards and disasters. And according to our modeling, it was conducted together with the, our consultants from the Asian Development Bank. Ten years from now, that's exactly 2032, we're expecting a 23% increase in our inundation or rain. We have to be prepared for that. That's the reason why we have been implementing nature-based solutions in many of our projects. The establishment of our City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Commission as a full-fledged department through Ordinance Number 60, series of 2022, is a proof of our commitment. This transition underscores our city's dedication to prioritizing risk assessment, disaster preparedness and response, as well as targeting our approach climate-related challenges. We received a three-year grant from the National Disaster Resiliency Council for resiliency building, both capacity and capability. As the city has high vulnerabilities, we have the capacity for risk reduction initiatives. On urban regeneration, in January 25, 2023, we inaugurated the Aurora Hill Health Center. Three months later, we led the groundbreaking for the 75 or 75 million worth at our Super Health Center project. Phase one of the project is already up for bidding. We are actively planning for six new growth nodes to help get that on just the city center of this district. Ito ay nagtitiyak ng ating luso. Ay mapanundika at may pagtitingin sa itangara. Na hindi nawawala ang layunin na itaguyod ang pantay-pantay ng oportunidad para sa lahat. Equity is the heart of our agenda. Extending to the grassroots level through barangay development. Satellite markets with a total cost of 13 million pesos at West Bayern Park, Middle Quezon Hill, San Vicente, and Dominica have been fully implemented. We have inaugurated the West Pilino Multipurpose Barangay Hall on September 2, 2022. The recent Barangay Hall is 90% complete. Improvements for the Asin Barangay Multipurpose Hall are currently underway. We have endorsed the Insa Pilot Barangay Multipurpose Hall, the Engineer Seal, the Bayern Park through the back of the building. And we're currently looking for funding for the following barangay. Santo Tomas proper, Gabriela Silang, Pangal, Hillside, and Outlook. Our cultural and artistry identity is a cornerstone of Bangladesh character. We endorsed with the National Commission for Culture and Art, the first volume of our cultural mapping book that identifies cultural properties in the city. We are now completing the second book. This project aims to raise awareness importance of safeguarding the living heritage, both tangible and intangible. In September 2022, we were invited to deliver our achievements to the Culture Indicators 2030 of the UNESCO World Conference on Cultural Policies and Sustainable Development in Mexico. We are the only city in the world requested by UNESCO to present the award. In the same month, in partnership with Bio Foundation, We opened the Harvest Community Living Hub. Ang aming layunin ay magkaroon ng ugnayan sa pagitan ng lokal na tagahabi at 
mga individual na gusto maunawa ng tradisyonal na sining ng hangin. This endeavor is driven by our commitment to safeguard, nurture, and elevate this timeless homegrown craft. These are currently being deliberated for the development of the Dominican Hill Conservation Management Plan, a 15 million grant given by NCCA. It's only designed for the crafting of this master development plan. Patungo tayo sa pagpaplano at ibang at ibang abot kaya mga pagkakataon para sa pabahay. Nakatutok tayo sa paglikan at isang bagyo na angkop para sa lahat, lalong-lalo na sa mga nangangailangan nito. The Luna Terrace is socialized housing and permaculture community is halfway done. We had a groundbreaking ceremony for the Tupinaw Housing Project on March 28, 2023 in Cuba. The plans of development for the area are currently being discussed. This will benefit 6,000 100 households. Our halfway home for rebel returning is already 54% accomplished. We are actively doing land banking. The local government needs more land for our housing project, as well as other social and economic infrastructure. On empowering the youth, kumikilala ng administrasyon ito ang malaking potential ng dala ng kapataan sa kasalukuyan at inaharap ng bago. Sila ay bumubo na higit 75,000 o halos 21% Bigyan natin sila ng pagkakataon para sa kanilang mga pag-utlad at aktibong pakikilahok. We must ensure that they become confident, informed, engaged members of our community. And I challenge our elders now. Let us give our youth, our young leaders, a chance to participate in decision making. Let us allow them to take the lead. Our local youth development council has been active in creating policies and implementing youth development programs, projects, and activities. The city government and ICLEG, together with Swiss philanthropy, signed on a memorandum of understanding on March 10, 2023, to begin activities for the local implementation of the youth focused Safe and Sound Cities, or the S2 Cities program. We are the first city in the Philippines to be officially part of this program. We have provided a venue for the youth hub will be inaugurated later this afternoon for the youth can come together, develop innovations, and create solutions for a safe and sound body. We partnered with Senerhia Foundation, the Department of Education, created the reading club that was held in July this year when we hosted an education summit in January 2023. DepEd shared that only 40% of ages 9 to 12 can read or write in English which, while less than half of the pupils aged 8 to 12, could read or write in Filipino. The Pasa Baguio Reading Camp aims to assist school children in enhancing their reading skills, addressing the perceived challenge of low reading proficiency among the city's young learners. A total of 112 volunteers spanning various sectors underwent training to lead reading activities for the 687 young kids. In terms of infrastructure, the Youth Convergence and Indoor Sports Complex, amount of 380 million, has already reached 13% completion, while the athletes' quarter stands at 42% completion. On economic recovery and development, kinikilala natin ang tunay na pagkundlad ng ekonomiya ay dapat na may kasamang pagpapalakas ng mga serbisyo o pagkabuhayan na nagbibigay lakas sa ating mga mamayon. The city has the highest gross city domestic product country in 2021 at 9.9% compared to the national GDP which is only at 7.6%. We still regularly hold a Sunday session road market encounter to give our MSMEs the platform to showcase their product and connect directly with the consumer. In December 2022, we reopened the Luwakan Airport which caters to flights to and from Cebu. But this only is the beginning. We hope to connect our city to additional local destinations, and by expanding our flight routes, we aim to create a network of connectivity that enhances our city's accessibility in order to provide for expanded economic opportunities. Additionally, the city government with the Department of Tourism and TIESA broke ground on the first tourism rest area in Luzon. We aim to enhance the overall tourism experience of our visitors coming into the city by providing the necessary the necessary visitors amenities and likewise serve as a hub 
for local creatives and entrepreneurs. Among our faculty projects lineup, 11 already have been completed. 16 are still ongoing. Six projects are awaiting for funding. Four have been endorsed to, to back for bidding. Four are with the P4 committee under evaluation, and two are with the P4 committee with negotiations, namely the market modernization, which is almost 95% complete, and the internal intermodal transport terminal, which is 30% complete. The original proponent status for the elevated monorail, the smart mobility and transportation system, and the ASEAN hydroelectric plant will be issued no later than Tuesday next week. Smart city management. In May 2023, we attended the World E Governments Organization of Cities and Local Governance General Assembly in Abu Dhabi to share our smart city initiatives with other cities from across the globe. This assembly played a pivotal role in enriching our strategies and in fostering collaborative learning to elevate our efforts in creating a more connected and progressive value city. Our intention is to reach Pledged smart city status by 2027. Expanding connectivity is a key aspect of our smart city vision. We're working closely with the Department of Information Technology to improve our connectivity. We will soon launch free Wi Fi in nine identified areas within the city. One of our noteworthy digitalization initiatives was when we launched the Budget by Packet e governance payment. November 16, 2022. We are enhancing accessibility to services, making them available at everyone's fingertips. This transition to digitalization was further exemplified when we launched the Palin QR page program at the Bank of Central of the Philippines in April 2022. By promoting cashless payments, we're not only simplifying transactions, but also fostering a culture of digital engagement. To encourage our business owners to use the program, the City Council passed Ordinance Number 71, Series 2022, granting a 2.5% discount on business taxes of the first year of crop adoption. Ang information ay nagiging isang makapangyarihan at isang katang na nagbibigay laga sa atin para mapabuti ang pamamahalang inusos. The data we have been gathering through our command center enables us to devise targeted strategies, allocate resources effectively, respond to proactively to emerging challenges. We're currently developing additional data analytics and tools in order to optimize the use of these data. On good governance, we held an oath taking ceremony for the members of our People's Council in May 16, 2022, and established a civil society organization there, solidifying our resolve to promote participatory governance. Additionally, we have always taken a proactive stand citizen engagement and regular public consultation. This practice ensures that our decisions are shaped by collective vision and wisdom and feedbacks of the people we serve. It is important to note that we have filed three complaints against BPWH for their involvement in substandard projects. Eleven more are forthcoming. In our pursuit of excellence, we are also focused on enhancing our administrative structure, our ongoing efforts to reach refine our performance governance system under the ISA, obtain additional ISO certification, and improve our organization development, reflect our determination to establish a governance framework that is both effective and accountable, responding adaptively to the dynamic needs of the city. Alongside these initiatives, we are also actively engaged in the LGU rationalization program, streamlining our operations and optimizing resource allocation. And as we move forward, it's imperative that we generate heightened buy-in for our transformation and rationalization program among our city government employees, fostering a shared sense of purpose and ensuring that every member of our team is an active contributor to our success. Isang mahalagang bahagi ng aming pangako sa mabuting pamamahala ay ang pagkilala sa mga larangan kung saan kailangan ang pagpapabuti. This entails embracing self-criticism as a means to refine our strategies and operations. To this end, we're working to enhance our absorptive capacity, ensuring that resources are maximized effectively. 
and efficient way. We must expedite our PPP process, streamlining it to facilitate progress. We must also dedicate to develop, developing additional digital solutions that enhance various LGU processes, creating greater efficiency and accessibility. More importantly, we are committed to strengthening disciplinary measures. We must demand no less than the highest standards for everyone in this service and foster integrity within this administration. Ang kahulugan ng mabubuting pamamahala ay nakaugat sa pamumunan. It is a vital thread that weaves a tapestry of trust between the people and their representatives. Good governance is our promise to the people of Baguio. To create an environment where fairness, responsibility, and transparency thrive. At this core, good governance is covenant of pledge that transcends administrative duty. As a political or as political leader, we must bear the responsibility of creating conditions where good governance can not only take you, but also evolve into a way of life. Tama na ang mga dating gawain. Hindi hindi na hindi hindi na gagana ang mga nakasanayan noon. And as I bring the state of the city address to you, I'm reminded of the profound significance of this occasion. We stand here today, not just as residents of the city of Baku, but as champions towards our resilient future, where challenges are met with unwavering determination and opportunities are seized with boldness. Abang tayo ay namumungkahi na nag ay nagmumungkahi na nagkakaisa sa layuning ito. Ating takahakin ang landas patungo sa inaasat natin kinabukasan. Pasasalamat at pag-aasa at pag-asa patuloy tayo maglalakpan na magkasama. Tanggapin ang pangako ng bukas sa ligayang araw sa Baguio. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank you so much for that inspiring bargaining message and state of the city address, Honorable Mayor Benji Mabala. Thank you very much, sir. We'd like also to acknowledge our friends from uh, the HRAP. We have the, the, uh, the candidates of Mr. and Ms. HRAP for 2023. May you please uh, stand up to be recognized. Thank you. Okay. And the congregation that will be on uh, September, 16th. September 16th. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this juncture, for another intermission number, let's put our hands together to Baguio's pride, the University of Baguio Voices and Graces.
Thank you very much. The UB Graces. At this juncture for the introduction of the guest of honor and speaker, let us all welcome our city administrator, Engineer Bonnie Canapena. Excellency Mary Kay Carlson celebrated her first anniversary as United States Ambassador to the Philippines last July 2023. Since she arrived in the country last year, Ambassador Carlson has already visited several places in the country, including the following Baguio, Batangas, Bataan, Boracay, Bulacan. Cavite, Cebu, Ilocos, Olongapo, Palawan, Pampanga, Leyte, and Samar, and Zamboanga. And most recently, she visited Davao. Before her assignment here, she previously served as the Deputy Chief of Mission and Charge Aid Affairs at the U.S. Embassy in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Prior to her assignment to Argentina, she served as the Deputy Chief of Mission and Charge Affairs in New Delhi, India, and held the position of Principal Deputy Executive Secretary for the Secretary of State in Washington, D.C. She has been a Foreign Service Officer since 1985, and she has served at the U.S. Diplomatic Mission in China twice, in Ukraine, in Hong Kong, Mozambique, in Kenya and Dominican Republic. Her domestic assignments included Director of the Secretary's Executive Secretariat Staff and Deputy Director of Korean Affairs. She is a native of Little Rock, Arkansas. Ambassador Carlson received her Bachelor of Arts degree in Spanish and International Studies from Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee. She holds two master's degrees, namely International Relations from Georgetown University and National Security Studies from the National War College. She is happily married to retired Foreign Service Officer Aubrey Carlson, and they are blessed with two daughters. So though, without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Her Excellency Mary Kay Carlson. to the city of Pines, 
so much so that my husband and I brought our daughters back here to kick off the new year in January. And I'm thrilled to be back in Baguio for a third time to participate in today's celebration with the theme, Reflections of the Past, Vision for a Resilient Future. I'm happy to say that my travels here in Baguio and all around the Philippines affirm this theme. Every trip I have made, from Pagutpud up north to Zamboanga down south and many parts in between, has brought me a greater appreciation for the Philippines' rich and diverse history. And during my travels, I've learned about this country's immense potential, a future that the United States is honored to support as your friend, partner, and ally. Thank you. I witnessed both the Philippines' heritage and future potential a few months ago when I traveled up north to the Ilocos region. The cobblestones and unique Spanish Ilocano architecture of Vigan transported me to the Philippines of the 16th century, and the earthquake baroque of Pauai Church was unlike anything I've ever seen. During that same trip, I visited the stunning wind farms of northern Luzon, where USAID is helping to build a more resilient future through support for the Philippines' clean energy transition. The Philippines' rich past and vision for the future were also on full display during my trips to the Visayas. Last October, I had the honor of joining President Marcos to mark the beginnings of the U.S.-Philippine alliance at the anniversary of the Leyte landing. I was the first U.S. ambassador, and very honored to be so, to see the historic Balangiga Bells in their rightful place at the Church of San Lorenzo de Marti in San Mar. <laughs> On a separate trip, I visited the Timex factory in Cebu, where thousands of Filipinos make watches that are exported all over the world. Timex is just one of the many U.S. businesses operating here in the Philippines, where Filipinos, from the entry level to the executive suite, work to build a brighter future for both the Philippines and the United States as partners in prosperity. Just a few weeks ago, I visited Davao for the first time, where I saw the living example of the Philippines' incredible natural heritage, the majestic Philippine Eagle. At every stop, in the dozens of places I've visited throughout the Philippines, I've been wowed by the youth, many of whom are alumni of U.S. Embassy Exchange programs. These talented young people take the lessons from their experiences here in the Philippines and in the United States to make their visionary ideas for the future a reality, including many small and medium enterprises which they've started on their own. Impressive, so impressive to see these young entrepreneurs. But of all the amazing places I've visited throughout the Philippines, Baguio will always hold a special place in my heart. Philippines that I've had the privilege of traveling to more than once outside of Manila, so I'm very happy to be here again. You know, the city of Pines reminds me so much of my hometown in Little Rock, Arkansas. The high school where I went to school, Hall High School, is just uh, half a mile away from my house, and in our alma mater, there's a phrase that goes, by lofty hills of stately pines, whispering forever in our minds. So when I come here, I don't see lofty hills. I see majestic mountains of stately pines. But that connection really does remind me of home. Baguio is steeped in history, some of which is directly connected to the United States. And you can see it in the names of many heritage sites here, like Camp John Hay or Burnham Park. But while this historic connection is important, Baguio is also primarily formatively a distinctly Filipino city with a rich indigenous culture, with leaders who have a vision for the future. And it's no wonder that it is a UNESCO creative city with the amazing performances that we've seen today. I'm so wowed by what we saw on stage. <laughs> the United States is proud to partner with you in realizing your vision for this city, Major uh, Benji. Our partnership comes in the form of educational linkages, like the University of the Cordilleras and the University of Cincinnati, 
joining, jointly developing programs on cybersecurity, or our new initiative, which I will inaugurate later today, to open an affiliate American space at the Philippine Military Academy to provide cadets with access to the latest in U.S. scholarly resources. Numerous cutting-edge American companies also see Bavio as a place to invest for the future. One of Texas Instruments' largest semiconductor facilities employs thousands of Filipinos right here in Baguio, and Texas Instruments has just announced that it will soon significantly expand its operations, both here and elsewhere in the Philippines. Baguio is also home to U.S. companies in the growing business process management sector, such as Seidel, Convergis, and Synergy. These companies are just part of the flourishing U.S.-Philippine economic partnership which is central to a more prosperous future for both of our countries. So as I stand here today to commemorate the City of Baguio's 114th Charter Day, let me thank the organizers for putting together this wonderful celebration and for selecting today's theme. It is impossible to serve as the U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines without reflecting daily on the profound historical connection between our two countries and our peoples. But there is also an incredible dynamism and energy in our relationship, which pushes us all, Filipinos and Americans, and especially our young people, to build a brighter future together. I cannot wait to see what the next 114 years will bring for the city of Baguio, for the Philippines, and for the U.S.-Philippine relationship. Agyamana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Her Excellency Mary Kay Carlson, for that inspiring message. May we request the presence of our city officials, headed by Mayor Benji Magalo, to hand over our simple token to our guest of honor and speaker, and also for photo opportunity.
voices. We have a lot of exciting activities lined up for the 114th Charter Day anniversary celebration of our city. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, everybody, to a uh, happy 114th birthday, Baguio City. My name is Rico Chong of 95.9 Big Sound FM. My name is Rachel from the City Tourism Office. See you again next time. Have a safe day ahead of you, ladies and gentlemen.